this video I'll give you my two cents on the statement that you need to be rich to be a minimalist. I get comments suggesting that I'm rich surprisingly often. I'll share a couple of principles of minimalism at home and talk about how they might get confused with monetary wealth. But before we begin, I'd like to thank Skillshare for again sponsoring my video. Skillshare is an online learning community where you can choose from thousands of inspiring classes on topics like illustration, design, photography, videography, freelancing and more. I've said it before but it still rings true, it's never too late to learn a new skill. Instead of piecing together things online like I did when I started this channel, Skillshare has helped me learn new skills in a more methodical manner. I've already taken the Lightroom Classic class and it's been so helpful both for my corporate job but also for making thumbnails and other artwork for my videos. I've now been diving into color grading for filmmaking, the vision, art and science with documentary filmmaker Dan Dan Liu. And I've been excited to learn more about color grading skin tone and matching shots so I can improve on my videos. If making videos is not something you want to learn, there are also classes on logo design, personal branding, creative writing, productivity, cooking, home decor, and so much more. Skillshare is offering the first 1,000 people who click on my link in the description a free trial of Skillshare Premium Membership. After that, it's less than $10 a month. Thank you, Skillshare! And back to the minimalists are rich statement. First of all, I would not consider myself rich in the financial sense. I live a comfortable life, that's true. But I've held jobs since I was 13 and I still work full time aside from maintaining this channel. So I work hard for what I have. With a combination of hard work and luck, I've moved up a long and winding property ladder. The first house my then husband and I bought for 1 million Swedish kroner, fixed it up and 12 years later when we divorced, we sold it for 5 million. Then I used my share and bought a house for 2.6 million, fixed it up myself and 6 years later sold it again for 5 million. And with that money I bought the inner city apartment I now live in. I have a mortgage and if you know anything about Sweden you know I've also paid a lot of tax when I made a profit on selling my homes. We're talking hundreds of thousands of kroner for tax alone. Moving from a house with all the cost of maintenance and renovation to an apartment has lowered my monthly spend in that department, which is a good feeling. I also save for retirement and try to chip off at my mortgage every month. What I'm left with is basically what I have to spend on everything else. Food, clothing, entertainment, gifts, travel, furniture, home goods, etc. This is where the secret sauce comes in and how I'm able to afford things that are considered high-end and even expensive in some cases. I don't buy a ton of stuff anymore. Over the years I've learned that when I buy lower quality at a cheaper price, I often end up not being happy with the pieces I get. They've maybe not lasted in terms of quality or appearance and I end up replacing them after a while. On the other hand, when I paid more for a great quality piece, I'm usually happy with it and it doesn't need to be replaced and can even become an heirloom piece that my son would be happy to have down the line. Basically look at the value over time. If you buy three not so expensive lower quality lights that replace each other every three years because they go out of style or just break down, imagine paying three times as much once for one classic piece that you can have forever or which will have great resale value if you decide it's not for you after all. You may need to save up for it but it'll be worth it in the long run. Don't skimp, pay what you can afford and give your purchases the extra thought before jumping in and getting something at the spur of the moment. I keep a running list on my phone with things I need for my apartment. When I find a contender, I don't immediately get it but think about it for a while. Is it the right piece? Will it work with what I already have? And most importantly, do I really, really need it? Maybe that chair doesn't need a throw after all. I think this might be where the minimalists are rich thing is coming from. When you look at my home, there's not a ton of stuff in it, but what I have is of decent quality with some designer pieces. Mind you, not everything in my apartment is expensive. I have an IKEA bed, desk and dining table, but there are IKEA pieces that don't scream IKEA. 
They're fairly neutral and have actually lasted me quite a while. I mix them with higher end pieces which are more designer and have more of a look, and they take more of a center stage. They give off the well off look, I guess. What I'm saying is, if Pete has X amount of money and chooses to spend it on 10 items, I as a minimalist might not get any of the items, or possibly one. So Pete and I might have the same financial position, but it's how we choose to spend that money that makes Pete's place look more cluttered and mine more minimalist and possibly more expensive. I'm not saying Pete is doing anything wrong. He can buy all the things and for that matter keep all the things if it makes him happy or if he's going for the more bohemian look. But that's where we are dissimilar and how our homes come across differently. Oh, as for one thing in my apartment right now where I have fallen for the cheaper option and regretted it? It's this IKEA rug. It's so soft, but to be honest the quality is so-so. It's gotten matted and no longer springs back after being vacuumed. And you guys, this is not the first of these I've gotten and I so wish I'd paid more in the first place for a 100% wool one. I bet it would have kept better. Lesson learned. To summarize. These are both principles for minimalism, but are, at the same time, what can give your home a more well-to-do look. Reduce the number of items you have and only keep what adds value to your life, the best of your belongings. Make intentional purchases when you do need to bring something new into your home. Cliché, but less is more. And those were my two cents on the minimalists are rich statement. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, it really helps my channel. Also consider subscribing, I'll continue to share all things Scandinavian from my apartment here in Stockholm and beyond. Thanks for watching, hej